With ridiculous inflation, furniture is getting more expensive and I'm not gonna lie, in my area it literally doubled. So real estate investors, homeowners and anyone else buying the furniture have to look for more budget options. As a result, running in poorly manufactured pieces from cheap material that getting easily broken and needed to be fixed. I purchased this cute little banded leather futon on Wayfair for one of my vacation rentals for about $450. I don't even think it's cheap for such a piece of junk it appeared to be. It did last me 4 months and this cheap construction with metal legs being screwed to some pressed wood pieces failed. How they even consider it's gonna work and for how long? I felt bad for my investment and didn't see myself throwing piece into trash when I'm pretty handy. So I came out with little do-it-yourself plan. So on all four corners where was the legs, the cheap junk pressed wood pieces had to come out. I used jigsaw for that and just went along the edge of the bottom wooden frame of the futon. At least the frame was real wood, that's a good news, because we need to work with that. But unfortunately it was quite thin to trust to, to connect legs to it, so I had to cut separately wooden blocks from 2x4 to put it in the each corner. To secure these blocks to the frame I used wooden glue and clamps. To make sure when clamps are out the blocks are being held not just by the glue, I used regular roofing nails to knock them through the frame to the blocks. And no worries about aesthetical look. According to my plan, it's adding little older school antique style to futon when back in the day and today you can find as well furniture pieces had decorative tags like you can see on the picture. When all set, done and secure, we can move to next part which is cutting and installing legs. I sanded and stained them to make sure they will be looking up to standards of my beautiful bedroom. And I used the same technique which is wood glue and clamps. But make sure you keep the same height from the frame. You don't want your futon to be shaking baking because of uneven leg size. With legs my main move to secure them was using deck screws. And as you can see I had enough space for them to go through all the way through the blocks. I added couple more nails for securing purposes, even I believe those legs wouldn't go nowhere if baby elephant decided to sleep on futon, and for decorating perfectionist look purpose, two tags would look silly, four is exactly on point. Also not to rip out the cheap fabric that was already torn, I cut it precisely and used staples gun to put it back to the frame. Looks pretty sturdy and I don't anticipate guests to go underneath the futon to mess with it. 
as any furniture should have pads to make sure it's not scratching the floor. I bought this self-adhesive pads for exactly 2x4 size, which I had the size of my legs. But you remember, and if you don't, is the fact that 2x4 boards are technically 2x4 just on the price tag. In reality, they're 1.5 inch by 3.5 inch. I thought pads production knew that, but apparently not, which is funny. Well, I trimmed felt pads to make it right. Here is the final look of the futon. When the manufacturer fails, it feels good to take a lead. And it's very sturdy, you can slightly jump on it, possibly have sex and definitely sleep on this little cute furniture piece.